Hello chess fans! This game was one of 10 simultaneous clock games Fischer played at Davis College. He played this game in the best traditions of romantic chess. He sacrificed a pawn in Evans Gambit and got a better position after his opponent's inaccuracy in the opening. Then he sacrificed a piece to sustain his initiative and finally one more piece, the exchange and a pawn to deliver the final blow. So after the initial moves, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, Italian game, b4, Evans Gambit. The idea is to sacrifice a pawn in order to build strong pawn center after c3 with tempo and d4. And here black made a mistake, a serious mistake, d6. It would have been better to play knight a5, returning the pawn, however, exchanging a very strong bishop, which exerts strong pressure on f7. And after knight takes e5, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, d5, the position would have been equal. But after d6, uh, Fischer got a chance to exert very strong pressure and seize the initiative. After d takes e, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes e, very strong move, queen h5, attacking boss f7 and e5. So the only way to protect f7 is g6 and now queen captures on e5 material equality is established and uh, white has a very strong initiative currently the rook on h8 is under attack so black played knight f6 instead of knight f6 pawn f6 would have been much worse because of queen b5 check queen b3 attacking uh, the knight and if king f8 defending it then just bishop captures on g8 eliminating the defender of h6 square and after rook captures bishop h6 check and white is winning that's why knight f6 now black would love to castle next move and in order to prevent it fisher uh, made a very strong move bishop a3 now if black castles of course uh, the bishop uh, falls and now uh, black's position black is just paralyzed the bishop is pinned the knight is also pinned because the rook would fall if knight moves. The queen doesn't have any squares for development. The bishop also has problems uh, in developing. And as the pieces cannot develop, uh, the rooks cannot develop either. So uh, that's why black played rook f8 in order to unpin the knight at least. If instead of rook f8 black played king f8 in order to unpin the bishop, then black is losing the piece immediately after queen captures on f6 because bishop cannot capture the queen of course as it would be illegal the bishop is pinned and if bishop captures on a3 then just checkmate of course that's why rook f8 and fisher just castled and now that the knight is unpinned knight g4 attacking the queen queen g3 and by exchanging uh, the bishops Black hoped to ease the pressure. Bishop captures a3, knight captures a3, and queen e7, attacking the knight. Now, if white uh, made some natural looking moves, white would have lost the initiative. For example, as the knight is under attack, uh, if knight c2, then just queen e5, which would lead to exchange of queens. Or if knight b5 attacking c7 then just uh, knight e5 closing the queen's diagonal and also attacking the bishop that's why something different something more original and energetic is required in order to sustain the initiative you can pause the video and try to find fisher's idea so in order to sustain the initiative fisher sacrifices the piece by playing bishop b5 check the idea is, after c6, which was the case in the game, to weaken the d6 square, as when the pawn was on c7, it defended uh, d6. And now that the square is weakened, without losing time on the defense of the piece, Fischer played knight c4. Knight is heading to d6. Uh, black didn't accept the sacrifice and played queen e6. If black captured the bishop, uh, Fischer gives the following variations. Knight d6 check, rook d1, now rook is very strong, 
and black pieces aren't black rooks aren't playing while white rook is very strong uh, discovered check is threatened currently that's why bishop d7 closing the file knight captures b7 check check now rook d4 uh, with the idea of doubling on the d file which would be fatal uh, for black as the king the bishop are on d file knight e5 rook d1 king c7 moving away from this d file f4 h3 f5 now discovered check is threatened that's why king b6 now queen e3 again discovered check is threatened that's why king c7 and now in order to play queen c5 check which would be deadly without losing time rook sacrifice rook c4 check and queen c5 check and now if king d8 and queen a5 checkmate and if bishop c6 then just knight b5 check and uh, black is losing the queen so probably feeling all these dangers black uh, didn't capture the bishop and played queen e6 and now uh, fisher again he doesn't care about material and just uh, sustains his initiative and develops exerting even more pressure rook d1 now rook is uh, terrible on this d file and now uh, black had to uh, already had to accept the sacrifice because hadn't black captured on b5 uh, white would have just checked on d6 and uh, moved the bishop on c4 as it would be defended by the knight on d6 with tempo attacking the queen and um, materially the position would be equal so without any sacrifices fisher would have had a great initiative that's why at least uh, in to get some material compensation for all these sufferings black captured the bishop c takes b now queen c7 followed with a checkmate in one on d8 uh, threat that's why bishop d7 now knight d6 check king e7 and now how to continue the attack fisher found a great way to do it you can pause the video and try to find Fisher's next move. I will give you one small tip. Find White's piece, which isn't playing, and the way to develop it in the most effective, energetic uh, way so that it exerts terrible pressure and joins the attack with great effect. So the piece which isn't playing is, of course, rook on f1. And if the rook is... Uh, moves to e1 and the e file is open if white manages to move away to get rid of this e4 pawn then that would be just devastating and fisher found the way to do it knight f5 check the, the second piece is sacrificed now black captured on f5 if instead of this black played king f6 for example then rook d6 is pinning the queen winning the queen after g takes f of course white isn't capturing the queen uh, immediately because uh, the bishop would have captured uh, but captures the bishop and uh, the queen is lost anyways or if king e8 then the fork would follow that's why after knight f5 check black captured the knight however now uh, the aim is reached the e file is open now e takes f now, if queen captures on f5, then black is losing immediately after queen d6 check. And if king d8, then black is losing both rooks. And if king e8, then uh, deadly rook e1 check and checkmate. That's why black played rook c8, attacking the queen. And now comes the exchange sacrifice. Rook captures d7, check. And after queen d7, the pawn sacrifice again. f6 check. The king must defend the queen. That's why a king cannot capture. And of course, king e6 or king e8 losing immediately to deadly check on e1. That's why the knight captured on f6. However, now black is losing the knight and the queen. After rook e1 check, the only move is knight e4. And after rook captures only for check, king must leave the queen unprotected, and queen captures d7. 
There's a last hope of black, rook d8, with some checkmate back rank issues. However, Fisher played queen g4, taking under control d1 square, after which black resigned. However, Fisher in his annotations writes that in this position it would be much stronger, of course, to play queen e7 check with checkmate in four moves. So I hope you enjoyed the game and if you did, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next videos.